everybody. So uh, I occasionally create tarot spreads, and I love to create new spreads from things that I've read or seen that uh, give me uh, new insights into self, the awareness of who you are, the awareness of um, where you've been, and how you might be continuing to grow. So especially because what's important to me with tarot is helping to uh, help you have the best version of yourself. In order to get there, sometimes we have to know where you've been. And I would argue most of the time we have to know where you've been. And this isn't like a um, how has your mother affected your life kind of experience. It might be how has your father affected your life kind of experience. Anyway, uh, the, the spread I'm about to share is one that I, I call the Queer View. And it's inspired by The Velvet Rage by Alan Downs. Um, if you haven't read it, I would encourage every queer person to read it, especially gay men to read it. Um, especially especially gay men because it's written about gay men. I do think it's problematic in that it's written from a very um, white male, white cis male point of view, product of its time. I think there's an opportunity to update it or to provide from whichever author wants to expand on it some additional information. Uh, but uh, in the in the interim, I think there is some useful information in there, some some recognizable lived experience, and there's a quote that I want to share with you before I uh, flip this camera around and show you the spread that I've created. Uh, and he says, "Although we are older now, we are still driven by those insatiable, infantile drives for love and acceptance. In order to survive, we learn to become something that we thought." would be more acceptable to our parents, teachers, and classmates. Talk about imposter syndrome, shadow self, all of those things that uh, we might uh, not recognize that we've been ignoring uh, in, in order to be acceptable to those around us based on the conditioning behavior that we received as the younger version of ourselves from our immediate acquaintances and relationships like our family, parents, siblings, grandparents, um, school, the, the people we have at school, teachers, all of those. But in the immediate, it is trying to find the acceptance of uh, our parental figures, whomever they might be, whoever raised us. So uh, as queer folks who are discovering new facets of our, our pride all the time, we're also asked to, uh, to explore these uncomfortable experiences and biases and traumas. And I think that this spread helps you do that. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this spread with you now. And I'd love to hear uh, from those who are tarot readers, what do you think of it? And I'd love to hear from those who are benefiting from the experience of tarot readers and sitting with us and asking us questions. What do you think of this uh, exploration? So leave me some comments and let me know how it goes. So here, here's what the spread looks like and how you might experience So this it. is a little hard to fit into one camera angle, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna move some things around so you can see. There is, uh, in, the, in the layout here, we've got card one, two, underneath three, four, five, and six. And then just underneath all of that, we've got seven, eight, and nine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the, uh, uh, start at the very beginning. Um, I'm gonna start with this uh, layout and just express kind of what it is. And it looks, I'm gonna, here's a, here's a version. It looks kind of like a house. So card one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, seven, eight, nine underneath. You see, um, I've just got them all numbered seven. Uh, but the, the point is to have something that's kind of like a house. Um, and it is, as I mentioned, inspired by the Velvet Rage. So I'm going to share a little bit more about what I think about this. Uh, because as queer folks who are discovering new facets of our of, of ourselves, I kind of like where I started, we're, we're exploring experiences and biases within ourselves that are created by the conditioning of other people. And so as we start to go through this, think about those moments where you longed for acceptance, where 
you might have been mitigating rejection or possibly experiencing it. And if you'd like to share what you're feeling as we go through this, uh, drop it in the drop it in the comments, and um, we can we can have a shared and communal understanding of what this spread might bring to us together. So. Uh, as we go through this, know that sometimes the traumas are hard to see, especially when you're adept at circumventing shame. When you're really good at it, it's it's easy to release those things. I, I'm one of those people who I think was really good at it, and I was able to um, say that wasn't my issue, that wasn't my thing a lot, until I started recognizing it uh, by by hearing from others what they were experiencing and going, oh yeah, that that is an issue for me and I didn't really notice it. So as I was reading The Velvet Rage, this spread started forming in my mind and I, I use it as a way to explore challenges in myself but also in my relationship. So so here's what they are. Here's Here's what the thing is. Card one, this is you. It's you today, you now. It's kind of, for those of you who are tarot readers, and I hope, I'm assuming you're a tarot reader if you're watching this, uh, but you might be someone who sits with tarot readers, so I'll explore this in a couple different ways. Card one is you. This is how I look at uh, where you are today and what you might be experiencing today and how you're coming to the conversation. Um, so it is an expression of self in the now. Card two is the shadow of that self. What are the things that are um, unexplored or might need to be explored? What are the challenges, the potential traumas that is informing self today and how you're coming to the world today? <clears throat> this is, uh, might also be described as the ugly part of yourself or that which thrives on your pain. Uh, the shadow is always there. Uh, the the challenge is, do we choose to be aware of it, work with it, live with it, explore it? Um, how do we express it? All of those kinds of things. Uh, underneath, this is the validation you seek. And according to the Velvet Rage, uh, for those who are most to identify as gay men, this is our first failed relationship with a man, typically our father, <laughs> that he couldn't or, or wouldn't validate our love and the love we seek. So th think very um, Freudian, I guess, in that way. But um, this card underneath, the validation we seek. So if this is now and this is the shadow, this is uh, what we're hoping will validate us. Over here to the left, this is the fourth card. This is how shame is manifesting itself today. So how is shame manifesting? So self, shadow, validation, shame. Up here at the very top, this is how love is manifesting itself today. So opposite of how um, validation is shame. To the corner of, um, or excuse me, opposite of validation is love. To the corner of shame is love. Underneath love is shame and validation. I think that's fascinating. And uh, over here in the sixth position is how you're compensating for that shame. So we have validation, shame, love, compensation. So if shame's over here, um, the compensation for the love. Underneath love, validation, compensation, shadow. Uh, it's, it's a lot underneath and impacting love. Then, uh, as we move underneath these things, further underneath them, these three cards are representative of you. Um, so this is you now, but this is a... a another version of you next to, and how you're bringing yourself to this circumstance, next to your helper and your teacher. So uh, what I do with these, and right now I, I didn't do it properly, so I'm gonna pull three new cards. What I do with these is I look for, as I'm pulling cards in the deck, oh look, there's one right there. Uh, I look for um, court cards, and I'll just flip through until I find the next set of court cards. And I always lay that, them down as you, the helper, and then the teacher. 
so in, in this instance, uh, here is another representation of you. And then the person who's here to help you through this circumstance and the person who's here to teach you something about this circumstance. So we'll come back to those in just a moment. So what is this person going through? What is the experience that they're having? And what is the queer view of, <clears throat> of this person? Often um, this may have a secondary filter, like uh, how, how are they coming to their relationships? But in this instance, let's just look at it uh, on the surface view. So uh, this person, the daughter of wands here, and for those of you who are looking at traditional or historical decks, daughter of wands is kind of like an amalgamation of a prince or, uh, excuse me, a, um, a knight and a page. So it's not quite a page, it's not quite a knight. And in this deck, um, the feminine is of a higher position, slightly, than the masculine. So um, it's matriarchal in its way. So this is kind of more on the knight side of wands than the page, but it's still a little bit above. So anyway, uh, what is the, who is this person that is coming to me? This is someone who I can see is um, outwardly expressive, creative. They, they are urgent in what they try to achieve, and they um, are often the type of person who comes dressed to the nines. So uh, I may be working with someone who, in our queer world, is not the type of person who either hides who they are or is able to. They are not the type of person who passes. And as someone who doesn't pass, um, that is uh, that is in its way freeing and for some incredibly fearful uh, in, in how they move through the world. But it's also the type of person who gets up and, and uh, may have the added stress of survival. Not that we all don't have survival stress, but um, it may be increased. So this, this is a person who, who is carrying strength and power and um, vulnerability in a way that shows through the way they are seen in the world. So what's the shadow of that? Um, the shadow of that is represented by the Father of Swords. It's represented in... Um, trying to prove value and worth through um, things like being on time and being right all the time, uh, perfection, um, seeing the end goal and meeting it, maybe even sooner than they um, promised, you know, like pro saying one thing, but promising one thing, but delivering early, meeting expectations early. So this is a, a person who is, uh, is extremely creative and fun and exciting. And, and uh, yet yeah, underneath, they have the fear of never meeting expectations, of um, trying to prove their, their value and their worth to others all the time. What does that mean uh, for their validation? So what is it they're seeking to be validated? This is the Empress and uh, the, their validation that they're seeking is that they, they've got all their shit together. They found a way to, um, to provide everything they need on their own. Uh, by the way, in this deck, when I see this card, this is my I'm Every Woman card. That song comes to mind every time, and, except it's the Whitney version, not the Shaka Khan version. Um, not to disparage the Shaka Khan version, I love them both, but the Whitney version has a different feel, and that's what this card is for me. So just so you know. Uh, so validation is that you can be everything to everyone, and you do that through these behaviors of trying to show that you can be perfect, you can deliver, you can bring everything that the people around you need all the time. And that's a heavy burden. Um, it's a heavy burden. So validation uh, can be can be intense and heavy. This is a positive and a negative. This has shadow and light. So when to have the Empress show up here and know that the validation you seek is that you can be everything to everyone. 
That's a lot of personal burden. So be careful with that. Uh, then when I'm looking at the, um, the shame and how shame is manifesting today with the five of cups, it's manifesting in a way that shows you're worried about the things that don't matter. It's manifesting in your relationships and you clinging to those relationships that um, have been a part of your past that are no longer necessary. And when you put value in relationships that are no longer necessary, you're actually not paying attention to yourself. So the, the shame of relationship, the shame of the conditioning that others have given you to like hold on to prove that your relationships matter and have value and worth. This is not doing you any favors. Uh, it's just, it's taking on the burden of proving that queer relationships have value and worth through your relationships instead of actually uh, having relationships that matter to you. Then as I look at how uh, I'm going to skip love for a minute and I'm going to come over to how you're compensating for that shame. This is judgment or aeon in this deck. Uh, and it, it now is clear to me that this person's experience of shame is a lesson that they're learning over and over and over again. This is a continued lesson. And right now it's a lesson that is manifesting for them. So um, you're, you're compensating for shame and saying it's external to me. It is something that uh, others did to me. It's not something that I need to be responsible for. Uh, and if you, if you recognize, one, the conditioning, great, that is an external experience. But the behavior that comes along with that, now it's starting to be repeated and saying, it's not me, it's them. And if you don't take a responsibility for your own action, now you've, you've missed the mark. Yes, let's recognize what's external, but let's also recognize what the work is for, our, for ourselves internally in order to be um, <clears throat> accepting of who we are so we can move through that experience into something greater. So then how does, how does all of this then show up in love? If we've got, um, we're clinging to past relationships and the, the, the conditioning that that prov provides, if we're um, clinging to others and saying that you are responsible for where I am and I, I have no responsibility for where I'm headed. In addition to knowing that we're looking to be validated <clears throat> for uh, what we bring to our relationships, how does that show up in how love is manifesting? And love is manifesting in the emperor. Love is manifesting in short relationships that don't bring us a, a long lasting experience. So it's manifesting in one night stands. It's manifesting in um, the experience of a relationship where you say, you're not giving me what I need, get out. Or you're not giving me what I need, I'm leaving. And so love is manifesting in in, in challenging ways that feel as if it is um, short bursts of action, it feels that it is never going to be long lasting, and it feels as if um, we don't have anything that we can hold on to. And that behavior continues. So because I also have three uh, majors here, that's what is impressing upon me that this person is experiencing a lesson right now in these short relationships and in clinging to the past and in blaming others. So what might they look to for themselves? All right, now we're going to bring in these, these three lower cards uh, to understand what they might look to in themselves and who can help them through. So the what are they looking to in themselves? Now I, I've moved from uh, a lot of fire and earth where things were really kind of being burned through and frustrating to water. Let's look to your emotional conditioning. What has, what has others, and this is where I might pull more cards, what have others taught you to believe that you feel about yourself and the people around you? How might you uh, 
look to those emotional states that you're having so that you can better understand not only the outward but the inward expression of self and find ways to back to Whitney Houston, have the greatest love of all. How can you love yourself? Uh, and who can help you through that? You have a helper and a teacher. These are both earth signs. So finding grounding in the experience of um, your, your expression of emotional state today is going to be where you start. So how can you be more grounded? The helper is someone who likes to work in the background. They're not someone that you would find um, who has like a stage to represent themselves on, but they might be somebody you know for a while. They're someone that you recognize as grounding. They're someone that you recognize as um, having experience in that which you wanna learn most, which is this emotional awareness. The teacher is gonna guide you through uh, understanding the compartmentalization of. Not that compartmentalization is always healthy, but in this instance, for this person, it would be in order to understand where they've been, where they are, and where they're going. And that compartmentalization will then allow for, with this other, this helper, the unity of those things. Um, so there, this is just a, a, a quick version, quick, it's been almost 20 minutes, a quick version of how you might take a view of where you are and what you need most and how you might move through the world. Because then, um, for those of you who are fun and savvy tarot readers now, you've got a spine. Here's that, you know, emperor up here at the very top. Love. You've got a spine of, of um, how you're expressing yourself today, what the, um, what the validation is you seek, how you're bringing to your yourself right now and what the love is at the very top. This spine is powerful. Um, across the uh, middle, now you've got a past, present, and future experience as well that is buried in, in a filter of the, um, the shame, where you are today, the shadow, and how you're compensating for that shame. So there's a little shame line of today and what you might be experiencing. So there's a lot buried in here. Um, you can you can play with this in in a lot of different ways, but it, it's 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 the queer version of self and where you are right now. You can find a lot in this to explore, in order to um, have not only a greater understanding of self, but uh, a new understanding of how you're bringing yourself to the relationships around you, and what relationships exist today that can help you, that can teach you. Or you can keep your eye out for these these individuals so that you do have a greater um, uh, connection to the helpers and teachers in your life. Okay, that was a lot. So uh, I I hope this is helpful. I there's so much within this spread that can be used to your advantage to find insights not only into yourself but if you're reading for others into someone else. And uh, while I call it a queer view, I think it's uniquely important to queer people to have these kinds of views and this this holistic expression of understanding where you might be today. Uh, but it is it's not you know just for queer people, but you can say it is. Uh, I I think it's important to take a look at uh, a deeper a deeper view of self by seeing some of the other spreads that are within this larger spread because um what have i got four six nine we've got nine cards there's a lot going on in nine cards there's a lot going on in one card uh, but if you want to look at some of the sub spreads within this i was i was starting to say that spine of the reading where uh where you're looking at the um the trajectory of of what do you need to work on through where you are today through love and including the shadow and the validation that exists within that. That's a lot in that spine. There's a lot to talk through. There's a lot to experience and express there, uh, including the um, left to right, like your traditional past, present, future, but you're looking then at the, um, at the, what is it? The, how shame is manifesting and how you're compensating for that and the energy going through where you are today and the shadow that exists within it shame and how it's manifesting and you in the middle Ugh, 
th there's depth there. That's an intense conversation. If you just want to talk about the through line of shame. And then when you start to discover some of these corner pieces, like how does shame and love work together? Like how do those two things exist in the same space? How does validation and love work together? How is uh, how you're bringing yourself and love to the world today and love work together? Uh, when you connect those singular cards with love itself and how you're bringing, uh, how you're manifesting love today, you can uncover a lot of challenges, uh, but you can also uncover a lot of opportunities once you're aware of them and accept that they exist. So this knowledge of where you are and how you're bringing yourself to the world, this view, huge, 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 uh, because it, it starts to then call, it, it, I mean, the spread will call you out. It does. It calls you out and says, here's what you got to work on uh, so that you have a greater understanding of self. One of the bonuses of this is that um, it's going to bring up past mistakes that you need to acknowledge. And it's going to bring up what you might need to support your relationships. It's going to bring up behaviors. It's going to bring up attitudes. Uh, and it's going to it's going to call for you to say, you can't do this alone. That teacher and helper um, sets it up. You can't go through this journey alone. You need other people. You need to be in relationship with other people in order to um, experience, validate, and express where this reading is taking you. So uh, I hope that this is helpful. I hope that um, you, if you've made it this far, I'm assuming that it is. So I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about it? What, do you, what are you experiencing? If you use this spread for yourself, what did you learn? Was it, was it helpful in guiding you through a greater awareness? If you're sitting, if you're thinking about getting a reading from a tarot reader or from me, then ask for this reading. Let's experience it together. Say, I, I would really like to, to go through the experience of this queer view spread with you so that um, I'll have a greater understanding of self and what I might need to work on or focus on today because um, it'll bring up a lot. And I hope that in going through it with someone like me or someone who's experienced in, in pulling readings together for you, uh, it'll bring up additional questions that you'll want to explore during the course of the session that you have. Um, hopefully it even brings up questions now. Now, know that reading that I just, the example, wasn't um, specifically for someone. It was just, uh, I would pulled some cards to give you an idea of what having this kind of reading is like and what it's useful for. So thank you. Uh, I'll add more of these. Let me know what, what other ideas you might have for, for spreads or, or books that you've read that maybe I should maybe I should explore. I got so many ask questions, <laughs> so many things to talk about. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'll talk to you soon.